Their situation at Yaha Arena could best be described as treacherous for the running of a downhill. We've had a lot of fog, much of it up on the top. A lot of snow has been on the course, and the officials have already sent down some of the lesser seated racers as we get ready for the top contenders. And now into the start house is Michelle Fagini, and she is facing a little over a mile run. Bob, she's going to leave it in tremendous fog. Fine young Swiss racer, really burst onto the scene this past year. You saw her win a downhill in the Jeff. She's been in the top ten and six of the last seven to run. Well, Frank, uh, hopefully she's going to get out of the fog as she gets down into the turns in the gorge because there would be really critical. The top part here is pretty fast, but the turns aren't quite as uh, important as they are farther down. You kind of have to wonder, with only 32 racers in the event, though, why they didn't hold up a little while and maybe hope the fog would lift. I kind of wonder where she went for a minute, Bob. We lost her up there in the fog. Here she is again. Well, here she is now coming down. She hasn't really hit the gorge yet. We don't know exactly where she is. Here she comes into sight, Frank. One thing about Virginia, if she were to win this, she'd be the youngest Alpine winner ever in the history of the games in any of the three Alpine disciplines. Look at the course change, the condition. She came out of the fog into a brighter area, and now she's down in the critical part of this course, and she is getting out of the snow now. Well, she was very good in the early training runs this week. As a matter of fact, the Swiss trainers told me they would like to have seen the race start a little bit earlier because they figured that she was hitting her line just right. The girl's got a lot of energy. You might be right, Bob, because she had two first places in the early training, and she has fallen off the 19th and 17th in the 4th and 5th training runs. That's the time of the leader on the left from those early races that were sent down to clear off the snow. That's Pagini's time. She'll erase that by a considerable margin, as you can see. And Pagini is off the mountain, and, well, what we have seen of it, it looked like an awfully good run for Michelle Pagini. She looks over to the electronic timing device and the readout, and I think she has to be quite satisfied with it. Michelle Pagini, 17 years old. And now up at the start house, the best of the United States, Holly Flanders. And Bob, you can hardly see her. Okay, Frank, Holly Flanders is an outstanding downhiller, but she's particularly good on the flatter sections. She rides a very fast ski. That means she's a good glider. If she ever comes out of the fog right out here, we're going to be able to see her come in the side, I like to think. Boy, it really is getting pretty rough up there on the top, though. It is heavy up on the top. We lost her up there. She just absolutely disappears into the fog. She should be emerging. She comes. her running time on the right. Fortunately, it's relatively flat on the top, so you really can kind of place those skis flat on the snow and just let it run. The key for Holly, though, is down in the turns as she's getting down in here right now. It's she foggy the down course. there, too, Bob. It is foggy down there now. Well, it's a little bit foggy, but Frank, you can see her pretty well right in here. But this is where Holly sometimes has problems, is getting through the turns. She is, here she comes around the big sweeper. From here on down to the finish line, it's really just pretty much straight. And then we will be able to compare her time against that of Fagini's on the left, the second intermediate timing, and she is well behind Fagini. Oh, she's about nine-tenths of a second behind. She really will have to roll them down here at the bottom. She's going to catch her. And here comes Holly Flanders into the final seconds of the women's downhill. She had a second place earlier in the season at Verbier. Oh, she got a little bit of air on that bump. Fagini's time. She has the lead over in the left, of course. And here comes Holly Flanders. And Flanders will move into second place. But that's because she's the second racer down the hill. She is over a second and a half behind Fagini. So now we know one thing, that Fagini had a tremendous run. Holly Flanders from New Hampshire to Middlebury College there. Great ski racer. But I'll tell you, she has got herself up against some fast ones, and particularly Michelle Fagini. Now into the start house, the veteran Canadian racer in her final season of World Cup competition, Jerry Sorensen of Canada. Jerry Sorensen facing a rather spooky run, Bob. They have been averaging speeds and training somewhere around 60 miles per hour, and she'll just drop out of sight into that fog. Well, Frank, it looked like Fagini fired a pretty good run at the girls, being the first one down the mountain. And I think she's going to really be the one to beat right now. The thing about Sorensen is that she's not all that great in the turn. She'll go real well on the flat part. She's a really good glider, and she loves to go fast. But she doesn't really get through the turns all that great. She has had, though, in training here, a second place. So at least uh, we know that she can get through in pretty good shape. That was Fagini's time. You uh oh, 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 bad break wow. for Sorensen. Her ski came off, Frank. Looks like right in, kind of shook loose. And really, that is a shame. You train for months and months and months. And what frustration. And all of a sudden, there you are. Look at her pounding the ground. Oh, 
Oh, boy. Choppy, uh, Ski just popped off. Remember Kenny Reed at Lake Placid had the gold oh. medal opportunity for him. Came out of the start house just a matter of a few meters. Blew the ski off, and that was the end of it for Kenny Reed. And that's what's happened to Jerry Sorensen. That's heartbreak. The defending World Cup world champion in downhill. We saw her in 82 inch slot. And it really just tears him up. And quite frankly, it tears us up as you look at Jerry Sorensen. Broken hearted, really. We saw one of the earlier skiers who was sent down to clear the snow off the course lose a ski in uh, very close to the same area. Bob, let's take a look at Jerry again. Well, we can see her coming down here. Watch that downhill ski, the one closest to us. It just went in a little hole right there, popped right out. Well, that's a tough break. And she made a uh, tremendous athletic effort just to stay upright. She was traveling at that point. And there she skates off on one ski. Petite little French racer now in the start house. You're looking at Caroline Adia. She's 23 years old. She's 5'1", 112 pounds, and she disappears into the fog, Bob. 5'1 is relatively small for a downhiller as she disappears right now. Seems funny, there's that little cloud bank just kind of on the top part of this mountain. And now we'll pick her up a little lower. We assume that she got through there. Here she is, Caroline Adia. Coming down through here now, Frank. Here in the meter time on the top, and as you can see, Michelle Bajini much faster up there. You can see her now. She's coming down. She's about at the point coming in here where she really has to hit those turns well. And it clears up somewhat down in here. And I know Caroline, but I'd like to have a good race here in these Olympics. She had made the French Olympic team four years ago, and just before the Olympics, she fell and hurt her shoulder, and she missed out there. Very icy through that section too. Now she's in the big sweeper turn. From here on, it's just rolling terrain with a few bumps down to the finish line. Yeah. Very high speed. They have been averaging a little over 60 miles per hour in training runs. Here comes Caroline Adia. Almost in a tuck all the way now through this lower part. Very bright girl, too. Unusual story. She comes from Paris, not the mountains. Speaks Russian and has her master's degree in economics. But let's see her through the finish line. And she is in third place. So Holly Flanders holds on to second place. And now we know what we didn't know after Fajini came down from the number one draw. She had a tremendous run because she leads second place Holly Flanders by over a second and a half. Caroline Atia is in third place and we will be looking for show of France to come out of the start house next and well we do not have show in the start house at the moment. Well Frank I've just gotten word over my headset that there's been a problem at the start as far as show's concerned. Apparently, her binding broke just as she's going into the start house. But you don't hold a race up for any kind of equipment failure. No, everything is a fixed interval, and, uh, you know, you have to wonder what ha what's going on up there. I'll tell you, the weather is worsening, too. You saw the snow a moment ago. It's falling in certain parts of the course heavily now. The fog is just unbelievable up in top. And uh, I'll tell you, it would be a little terrifying to come out of there. And those tremendous speeds that you carry down low in that fog. Well, you know, everybody, the whole jury, everybody's hooked in with walkie-talkies, so something's Technical happened. Technical delegate for the women's uh, events. Why don't you describe to us what happened up there today? Well, basically, Bob, we started the race uh, a little bit before 12 o'clock. Everything was in order, and then the fog started to move in. There was uh, a difficult part of the course where there was a fog bank. The ladies couldn't see where they were going. We asked for a hold for two or three or four minutes to see if the fog would clear. It got worse and worse. After about 10 minutes, we felt that we just couldn't because of the safety of the racers and the fog uh, continue. And for that reason, we decided to cancel the first race. From my monitor, it looked like the fog was pretty bad uh, at the start. Do you think it was a wise decision looking back now to start at all? Well, of course, you can always ask that question. We felt at the time that it was a good decision. I was up at gate five. I had the jury right in the fog area, and we all could see two or three gates. But quite frankly, after a couple minutes after we started, a big fog bank came in. So in retrospect, it probably would have been better not to start. But at the time, it looked OK. Jerry, would you explain to us what happened to you? Well, in the first run, first of all, there was, you couldn't see much. You couldn't see one gate ahead of you. I was just going long. I got to the technical part of the course and the turns, and I, I just went around the turn. I was halfway around, and my ski just came off. There was a big hole in the course, and I just managed to pull it off and stop. Now, you claim that your ski hit a hole that was in the course? Oh, yeah, there was a big hole there on one of the turns. It's been there through the week, but today seemed to be the worst it's been. Well, how come they didn't have that uh, prepared? I don't know for sure. Usually for race day, the course is prepared very well and it's in top condition. Maybe just that one gate was missed. What is your understanding of why the race was uh, held up? The, I just understand that apparently um, that one of the French girls did not go. She was in the starting gate. 
because she couldn't see a thing, the fog, you couldn't see the first gate hardly. And she held up, and then also my trainers were in the section where I hit the hole in the course, and they, they saw that they were shoveling on the course, and you can't start shoveling on the course once the race has started, and they were changing the course, and so you can make an automatic protest to hold, the cor hold it. In your opinion, should the race have been held up? Obviously, you must think so. Well, yes, you definitely couldn't see. It was, it was really tough conditions until almost midway on the course, and it was really hard to see the next gate. So how do you feel about this? This is a great break for you, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really glad. I think it's a, a fair decision for sure, not just because it's me. I mean, other girls fell too, and and it's the, being the Olympics in any race, I like it to be the most fair as possible. Okay, Jerry, good luck when they finally rerun this race. Thank you. Bob, when you go back to that 12 o'clock start and you saw the race of Fajini turned in, as much as we could see of it, she had a great time. It's a tough break for her and a good break for Jerry Sorensen of Canada. Well, I think the one thing or two things probably that we know today is, first of all, if you don't like things in alpine skiing, just wait a minute because it'll all change around. And the second thing is that Jerry Sorensen got the break of a lifetime. She did indeed. Uh, let me ask you a question, Bob. You've been around racing all of your life. Should they have ever tried to start this in the first place? Well, first of all, I think the fog was a little bit severe on the top part of the race. And I don't think really they should have started the race. They should have waited a little bit to see if it started. But then once they did start, really I think they should have kept going unless it became that severe. And I really don't think it was that any more difficult than it was at the start of the race. Frankly, uh, Frank, it's, you know, it's kind of like driving a car. You can always see about 20 yards ahead of you. And so even though it's foggy, you can still see some. And in talking to the races that came down, except for, of course, the ones that uh, are very delighted that it uh, was restarted, they say, hey, it should have gone on. <laughs> Okay, so what we really had a 